Hello again and welcome to another 3D revolution. On this video I'm going to be showing you how to replace the nozzle on a Flashforge Creator Pro. There's a few reasons why you may want to replace the nozzle on your 3D printer. It may be that your current one is just old and worn out or severely clogged, or it may be that you're preparing to use a lot of abrasive filaments. Carbon fibre or metal composites such as brass or copper filaments can really wear out your nozzles quickly and with a lot of your stock nozzles they can get through three of them in one reel if it is a particularly abrasive filament. With a hardened nozzle, which is usually also extra coated as well, it can help prevent this from wearing out when using these abrasive materials and act pretty much as a normal nozzle would with something more like PLA or ABS. Now you need a few tools to replace the nozzle on your Flashforge. I'm using an adjustable spanner, a 9mm wrench, and a hex screwdriver which should have been included with your printer when you got it, but you can get these in any standard set. So I'm replacing my nozzle for a few reasons. It has been running for quite some time now and it's starting to show signs that it's wearing out. Uh, but I'm also going to start experimenting a lot more with these more abrasive materials. So instead of just doing a straight swap with a similar stock nozzle, I've gone for a slightly different one. Now this is Micro Swiss. Uh, I got this from a website called Technology Outlet. Uh, but you can get this sort of thing from a few websites. Protopast is quite a popular one in America. Um, oddly, Micro Swiss is made in the USA, so this is something you'll be able to get on the other side of the pond as well. Uh, but these have very good ratings for printing with high abrasive materials and it only cost me £15 so it's not exactly going to break the bank. Hopefully it's going to last a long time and I look forward to seeing how this performs. Now you've probably seen some videos or tutorials online about removing your nozzle without having to prepare anything first, just getting straight in there and removing the nozzle piece. And whilst you can do that, I'd always recommend removing the extruder from the carriage first. And the reason being is when you're actually removing that nozzle, with your spanner and your uh, wrench, you're putting quite a lot of force on there. And if you're not careful, if it's still attached to the bars, you can end up bending them and warping them, basically ruining your printer. It only takes a couple of minutes to remove, so it's always safe just to get that done first. So, let's get to it. To start, you're going to want to remove the extruder set from the carriage on the rails. Uh, the first bit you'll want to remove is the cooler fan on the side. It has three screws, and you're going to need your hex screwdriver for this. You can remove the two from the fan itself and then there's also one hidden underneath which holds in the duct which goes down to your left extruder. Once you've unscrewed them, the duct can come straight off the fan and you can put that to one side so it doesn't fall anywhere. The next thing you're going to want to do is to unscrew the carriage itself and that's two screws underneath. Once you've removed those two screws, the next thing to do is to remove the extruder from the carriage itself. However, you can see we're still tethered by the long cable collection here. You could unplug all of the different items down here, but that's going to take time and it's actually unnecessary. What I do is just grab one of these, which is a plastic box lid, and place this on top, which allows me to lay the extruder down without all the hassle of unplugging everything first. Now, this here is the left extruder, and this is the one that I'm going to be removing today. For that, you're going to need your adjustable spanner. Uh, you need something that can do at least 20 millimeters, but if you've got something that can do just over, that's ideal. Now you just slide that onto your heater block, hand tighten it so it can hold itself in place without sliding off like that, and then get your 9 mil spanner. Now. Ideally, get yourself a wrench like this that has the round end. It slots on really nicely and means that you're not going to have it falling off every time you try and turn it. From here, all you do, slot that onto the end of your hot end and twist. And sometimes you might find that it does take a bit of force to do that, but eventually you will, as you can see there, get that turning. And then from that point, you can just unscrew and pull out. 
Now when you've pulled that out, you're going to see that there is a small bit of Bowden tube attached to it. Now that may just pull straight out. Uh, it depends on if you've still got any filament residue in there. If you do, as I don't know if you can see that there, I, I have here, that's not going to come out. Now you could soak that in one of a few different substances which would break up the filament and allow you to pull that out. But luckily for me, I've got a spare, so I'm just going to dispose of this or put it aside and remove that later. So the next thing is to get the new hot end out. So that's the shiny new one right there. And I'll just compare that for you with the original. They look quite similar, different color. They're both, I didn't mention this earlier, they're both 0.4 millimeter nozzles. So they're the same size. Uh, this one is just much more resilient to abrasive materials. Uh, so to fit that again, luckily I have a spare Bowden tube. Uh, the flash forge actually comes with a couple of spares, so you should already have one of these if this is your first time changing the nozzle. And for that you can literally just slot that into your hot end, slide that back into your extruder, and screw that in. Hand screw it first, and once that seems to be all the way, just give it a little bit of a turn just to tighten it up so it doesn't come loose whilst you're printing. So I can go on there, and just a little bit of a turn there. It's not going to come off whilst I'm printing now. And that's pretty much it for now. We just need to put everything back together again. Well, I hope this video made changing your nozzle a pain-free process and got you back up and printing as soon as possible. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit subscribe and see you next time. Thanks for watching and remember, hit subscribe for more news, tips and live streams on everything 3D and tech.